Open your Bibles tonight to the book of Joshua. Joshua tonight. Amen. I want to uh, thank you for that love offering. It's, uh, I know what a sacrifice it is. I've uh, been in this fellowship for 35 years, and I've given a few times myself, and so I understand it. So I really am humbled that you would honor me uh, and honor the ministry that God's given and so thank you very much my wife appreciates it she gets all the money I don't have to, I don't know what happens to it <laughs> there it goes no so we really do thank you praise God but you all to stand for just a second I want you to put a hand on an empty chair hand on an empty chair <laughs> So we're going to pray right now that before, listen to me now, this is powerful, what we're going to try and, we're not trying to do what we're going to see now. We're going to pray that by the end of the year, every chair will be filled. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're talking about faith tonight and we're talking about what God can do. I'm telling you, when I was down in the prayer room tonight, uh, I've only been in one other prayer time that I've been in that has been anything like that. And that was at my church there in Carbondale. But this last, this tonight was absolutely, I'm telling you, I almost wanted to take off my shoes and just say I'm on holy ground. And I'm telling you that prayer is, is the key to turning the ignition of revival on. And so we want to pray for these chairs that are empty. That God's going to fill those chairs. And I want you to agree with me and believe God for it. So just call out to God and you just, you name a person. You may know somebody that's not saved or someone that you've been working with. And you're going to believe God that they're going to fill that chair. And there's going to be a change in this place. The dynamics of God. So let's begin to pray. Father, we pray right now, God, uh, by the blood of Jesus, Lord God, uh, this is your place, God. Uh, we are humbled, God, by your hand. Uh, holy God, I pray, God, uh, for every empty chair this night, oh God. Uh, you bring a new convert. You change the life. Uh, you bring a destiny into people's lives. Uh, you bring revival, God, into the land. Uh, holy God, we pray, take uh, an anointing to this place, God. Uh, bring revival, God. Uh, stir the people of God. Uh, cause there to be a lifeblood to flow uh, of Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, holy God, take this place. Uh, anoint God. Uh, bring God revival, Father God. Send down the rain, Lord God. Uh, we believe you for it, God. Uh, we thank you, Father God. Uh, we thank you for every instrument in this place tonight. Uh, every person, we thank you, God, for what they're going to do uh, for the kingdom of God. Uh, and release, God, destinies this night. Uh, in Jesus' name, uh, amen. Let's begin to praise God. Uh, Praise God. Amen. I, I was thinking about that for the last couple of nights, but uh, tonight is the night that we need to see something happen, and that's really cool what uh, we see going on here tonight. Joshua, he, this, praise God. Come on. There's someone here tonight that has been scared that God was going to call them into the ministry. You're sitting in here tonight, and, and you feel that I'm inadequate, and why would God even look at me? You're the perfect candidate with what God wants to do. And you've been battling this. I'm not talking about you're going to go out and, and uh, preach in a church. I don't know, but you, there's ministry. There's things that God wants to use you for, and you, you're the person right now you know that God's speaking to you. You know that God's speaking to you. 
I can come put my hand on you. You need to respond. I'm speaking words tonight, but they're not words of my life. They're the words of God that are going to come to your soul that God is verifying in your heart. God's verifying in your heart. Young man, who are you? You would lift your hand right now. Be honest. Why is it quiet in here? Because we're talking about the beginnings of revival, aren't we? And this is the very place where you say, I'd give it all. Yes. I would give it all. Yes. It might mean that you come in and just sit, you, you'd be playing the drums or don't want to take Ryan off the drums, but you know, whatever. It might be something else that God's got. You might be a person that uh, can do uh, 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 drama, be a drama person. You, you, but it could be something. God's, God's, I can feel it. Mm. Hello. And it's, and you're saying, I don't know about this God thing in the first place, but now you're asking me to do something that's even more than just a God thing. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. My sermon's short, so you don't have to worry. We're not going to be here for an hour and a half. <laughs> I preach. <laughs> but tonight, hello. God's, God is, just wants to touch you tonight. We're not talking, we're not going to, you know, pounce a bunch of people on you or anything. That's you. You, you raise your hand, sir. You raise your hand. I'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> Praise God. Words. How many know that our words can really be, uh, they can be acid. <laughs> can't, can't, can't we sometimes, you know, <clears throat> my wife and I have been here for five, six days, seven days, eight days, nine days, I don't know how many days I'm beginning to lose, how many days I've been here. But you know during those days that there's been once or twice where uh, someone, uh, well, I, I, I have had to apologize. Because I just, I got snippy. And you, you wouldn't think that a man of God like myself would ever get snippy. <laughs> that's a lie, because that's, we're all that way. Hello? Amen. But what happens here tonight is what is this words that have been spoken. Here in Joshua, we see this place where there's God moving here in the first chapter. Starting in verse 6. And here's Joshua... God has spoken to Moses. Moses has spoken to Joshua. Joshua has hear, heard these words. Uh, God has anointed Joshua as he's taken the place uh, of Moses. And listen to these words. Uh, because these words then resound to even be here tonight. Uh, these are words that are true for even tonight. Uh, two, three thousand, four thousand years ago, we have these words. And listen to what it says. It says, be strong. Uh, and of good courage, for unto his people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto thy fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Here are words that are dedicated to, to you and I. You have to understand that at that time, uh, there weren't uh, printing presses that they could just run off all those words and hand them out to, you know, we've got a Xerox machine back there. We could have taken those words, boom, 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 and I could have handed it to you, and you could see the words. The words had to be communicated from one person to the next person. And so you need to understand tonight that it's your words that you speak uh, that are going to affect other people, yes. are going to affect the marriage that you have. They're going to affect the relationships you have with a brother or sister. They're going to be words uh, that are going to give you a hope, uh, or there are words that are going to destroy uh, the dignity of your life. Uh, but it's words that we speak uh, that make all the difference in the world. Uh, and so we see these words being spoken. Uh, 
And God says we need to have deeds that, that match our words. There's a sad, sad picture here when we're looking at this. And we see our brother King Saul. And he, here he was, a, a, a wonderful warrior. And uh, God calls him out. And he's been made king. And, and he goes about to, and he decides to do something that he ought not to do. And you can read that uh, over in 1 Samuel 13. Whenever he went and he said, uh, you know what? Uh, I, I've waited long enough for Samuel. I've waited long enough for him to come. And I know he's, he's the priest and he's supposed to bring the blessing and stuff. And he said to wait on him, but uh, we're losing the battle and, and somebody's got to do something. And I'm just going to take the bull by the horns and do it. You ever do that? You ever just make a decision that you're going to do something? And all of a sudden you realize, that's really not what God wanted me to do in the first place. Hello? We don't. And, and then all of a sudden we turn and we see that. And this is what happens whenever we turn and see the very words that we have spoken and what happens out of them. And so King Saul, he says these words, and then all of a sudden, Samuel comes up and says, what do I hear? I hear the baying of sheep. In other words, these weren't uh, supposed to be destroyed, uh, and he wasn't supposed to go and make this uh, uh, promise uh, and do the actual work that they were supposed to do at the altar. That was supposed to be waiting for Samuel, and Samuel would bring the direction. But instead, Saul took off and did what he wanted to do. What a sad thing to have everything that you could want at your grasp, uh, and because of words spoken, you brought a curse to your life uh, and you walk away empty. Holy mackerel. That's a sad thing. Look over in Judges and you can find, here's a guy, Samson. Samson is a man uh, that decides that he's going to take things in his own hands. Uh, he's going to do what he wants to do. He's been told by his parents, he said, you know what, if you wait, uh, God will give you a, a precious woman. Samuel says, no, I want it, or excuse me, Samson says, I want it my way. And so he goes and he makes a, a decision and he speaks those words, and those words bring horror to his life because he loses his eyesight. And you see, he used those words. Here he is with Delilah, and what does he do? He begins to speak those words. He uses words and he teases with his words. He sometimes teases with people and... and uh, you, you, and all of a sudden you're making fun and you really do mean those words you want to just get, you just want to, just want to dig it. <laughs> yeah. I make fun of somebody. Put somebody down. Mm. Hello with your words. You know? You can look at me and I'm, you know, you can say, you look pregnant. And that's a word that would hurt me. <laughs> I may be looking pregnant, but you don't need to say it to me. <laughs> Hello? You get the picture that we can say things sometimes, that, and uh, you know, how does your hair, how does my hair look? Well, hon, I tell you what, uh, you might want to go in and try again. That's not always a good good thing to say, a good word to me, as you know. And I'm just teasing, hon. You look really good. Hello. Sometimes those words hurt, and so we got to understand that we need to have deeds that match our words. And she goes on and says, and disregards words of instruction, just as we have here in Joshua. Here it is, Samson uh, did not follow the instructions. He was told not to put his hand into a dead carcass. And he goes in and reaches in for the honey. He pulls out the honey and he eats the honey. And uh, he vo avoids uh, the very credibility of his life uh, that he shouldn't have done this, but he does it anyway. And because of this choice of listening to what the words uh, that have been spoken to him that will bring encouragement and life to him. He sets them aside, instead does what he wants to do, and it's his words that he does that has made a difference. And so we find that we are find ourselves in the same position. So we got to realize that, that he disregarded the impact of the words that he spoke. So his deed was that he was supposed to be a man of God. Do you know how long he was a judge? He was a judge for over 20 years. Everybody always thinks about Samson and Delilah, all this happens in a year or two or six months or something. But this is over a long time. He's been a person that you've been looking to. This could happen to you. You've been serving God for a long time. Or you've been in a good situation for a long time. And all of a sudden, you begin to decide to do something that is out of line. That you choose to say words that made a difference that destroys your life. And here it finds this man that in a place where his words, uh, he disregards the impact uh, of what he's saying. What happens to him? 
personal desire overtook him. What he wanted first took over. What takes over your life tonight? Does the word of God, do the words in here uh, begin to uh, taste like sweet honey? Or do the words in here, what do you do with these words? Uh, what are they to you? They're just something written on paper, and you know what? It's man anyway. No, it says in Timothy, it says that the word, words are inspired by God. And so they, the words that are inspired, uh, and they come from the heavens of heavens, and God takes it and writes these words for us. Uh, and here we find ourselves in a place where we allow personal desire to overtake the words. And so what was spoken was in his heart. What is spoken a lot of times is what's in your heart. Doesn't it talk about that? Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. Hello? And what happens with those words sometimes? They don't mean very much. They, don't, they really don't help out in a lot of ways, do they? Because all of a sudden you said the wrong word at the wrong time, and you destroyed a relationship. I remember speaking words that are earlier in my marriage and uh, words that violated my wife. And those words, you know what? I lost trust. Do you understand what we're saying when you say your words as you speak? You could lose trust. It took a long time. It didn't take no day or two. I'm sorry, honey. No, you can't open your mouth and stuck your foot in, stupid. <laughs> Hello? And what happened is that we're talking about two to three years before it got up better. Because I made a wrong choice with words that I spoke that violated my wife. Thank God that we're happily married now. But we went through some rough times because of things that I said that were out of line. And because, you know what those words were? Those words were my character. Oh, come on now. And when you speak those words to other people, they're your character. They're your character. They're what you are. And you need to understand, that's why it says the deeds need to match the words that you speak. Here, our brother Joshua is speaking to us and telling us the wonderful hand of God. He says, be strong and be courageous. The Lord God is with you. And so I'm telling you what, what brings revival in this place is that you've got courageous words. I'm willing to stand for the kingdom of God. No matter what comes down, there's nothing that's going to separate me from the love of God. I'm going to go straight forward, forward, and I'm going to run, and I'm not going to get weary. I'm a child of the living God. Woo! You are, you are, you are. And you can run. And you know what, man? If you're even close to my age, you can still run. Hello? You can run for the kingdom of God. Man, you can run for the kingdom of God. You don't have to sit there like a bump on the log. You've got something to give. Hello? You have something that's alive, uh, that's in your heart. Uh, and God says those words that you've spoken at times, uh, God knows those words. Uh, and those words have made a difference. And you're making choices with words that you speak. Uh, you need to speak words of faith, sis. I'm telling you that instead of words of discouragement uh, and words that have been bringing you down, uh, you start speaking the word of God uh, and the truths that are there inside your heart that God's put there. You speak those words and God's going to turn it. You hear yeah, me say God's going to turn the whole situation, everything in your life that's been upside down and turvy for however long it's been, God, in one moment of time, you're that important to God. You are too, but right now this is for her. <laughs> you hear me say Father, I pray right now, God, yes. cause her words, God, to, to form God on her lips for the kingdom of God, that, that you will take and help her in all decisions in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise. Hallelujah. We believe God uh, has set that place. We have to live by the words that we speak. I can remember this one time. An pastor came up to me and says, Hey, Vic, did you get all those flyers out? Sitting in the back seat of my car were about 300 flyers. Yes, Pastor! I got the flyers out. <coughs> 
None of y'all would ever do that, would you? Someone would ask you a question, and you would not tell them the truth, that you'd be dishonest. None of you would do that. I did, though. And I felt those words because I had to come back. You know what I had to do, don't you? Come back and go, she's not my pastor. Pastor, I lied to you. I didn't get them all out. I had them in my hands. Showed it to them. So, destiny was changed that day for the good. Because I knew the words that I had spoken and what impact they had. It's, it's really interesting because there was one time that when I was pastoring and I had a young man and a young woman together they were in, in the room and, and uh, asked him if they had been fornicating, if they were sleeping together before they were married. And, uh, I asked the question, I can't remember just exactly how I asked the question, but it was, it was put to them, you know, have you, have you been sleeping together? And they said, no. Because what they did is they said, no, we didn't sleep together. We had intercourse together. And we did all these things that we weren't supposed to do because we weren't married. But we didn't sleep together. So they answered, no. So I'm sitting there and I'm befuddled. How do I, what do I do? Do you understand what we're saying? Lie, we can lie because we don't want to be caught. Hello. We don't like being caught in our sin. We don't like being caught in our lies that we would say, and the things that we would do. Dr. Caroline Lee wrote this, and she said a book called Switch on Your Brain. She said 75 to 95% of illness that affect us today are a direct result of our thought life. So what you think is what you say. Come on. Okay? And so what uh, Dr. McMillan uh, wrote a book a long time ago, back in the uh, 70s, late, early 70s, and, and uh, he wrote a book on none of these diseases, and he talked about the same thing. He talked about what causes, where we're causing that place where all of a sudden you're physically upset, and you've got all these physical problems. It's because you lied. You haven't told the truth. You've allowed that to be inside. This is a, so we're talking about a practical thing that would help you to be healthy, that you could live to be a ripe old age. Hello, because you're going to be an honest person. And so you take and you're going to be a person who's going to say the right words uh, because you know it's going to make a difference for your life. You won't be sick so much. How many love being sick? How many love catching colds and doing all this? You know what? It all comes from your immune system not working properly. I'm just, I'm just talking about these are the books that I'm quoting about aren't Christian books that are written out. These are books of my scientists that, who take and study all this kind of stuff, and they give you the very place of where you're at and, and what's going on in your life, and they can tell you this is what's going to happen if you do these things. I always love it whenever you know that you're telling the truth that in these sermons and somebody and you know everybody gets real quiet because they go oh me because we're all we've all come into this place and so what we're looking at tonight is letting our words change because words are long term when you speak a word it goes into not cyberspace but it goes on forever so if you want to preach and just want to see if there's some type of other being out there somewhere and wants to hear the word of God, go ahead and preach it. But you know, it's just, we have a, they did your words, you know, you can't take them back. Once you've spoken it, once you've said it, it's done. Internet, tweet, Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, never have been, never tweeted, never will. <laughs> have no need for it. Why? Because I see what's happened to see people who lose their relationship because they get into Facebook. You know what? Those thousands of people on there that say they like you, they are lying to you. They don't like you. 
You just want to have a big reservoir of names on that thing. Hello. That's all. Did you know how many? I've got 327,000 people that love me. They like me. No, they don't. Hey, they know who you are. So we realize it's that we need to be people who, when we speak words on a long-term basis, they ought to be words that are the Word of God. Psalms 119, verse 15 says, I will meditate on your precepts or your words and think about your ways. Philippians 4, 8 uh, talks about the same thing. Think on these things, whatever things are true, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, all these things, think on these things. Let them be part of your life. So what we're talking about now is thinking on the Word of God and allowing that to be something that will change your heart. Now, there's nothing more relaxing than to take and read the Word of God. It is really relaxing until you find something in there that speaks to your heart and you all of a sudden you realize, ah, I got caught. Let's turn back to the other page. The other page <laughs> this one here, this particular page is not a good page. God, can we rip this out of the Word of God right now? I don't. But you know what I'm saying, though, that if we begin to allow that to, to be words that, you know, that will have life, real life, okay? You are writing a gospel, a chapter each day, by deeds that you do, by words that you say. Men, read what you write, whether faithless or true. Say, what is the gospel by you? We're in here in church. You know why we come here? To get straightened out so when we go out, we'll fly right. My dad always told that to me when I was a young kid. You better straighten up and fly right. And dad had, had the enforcer. He was big, he was black, he was about 44 inches big. Anyway. <laughs> Hello, but the right words. There's, uh, you know, being able to communicate is, is critical. Matthew, a three-year-old son of Stuart Cook, was eating an apple in the back seat of the car when he asked, Daddy, why is my apple turning brown? Matthew's daddy explained, because after you take the skin off, the meat of the apple causes it to come in contact with the air, which causes it to oxidize, thus changing its molecular structure and turning it into a different color. There was a long silence. Then Matthew asked, Daddy, are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> we may have the correct answers for people asking spiritual truth, but such truth is only of value when it is understood by them. So we gotta be able to be people who know how to communicate. And so that's the issue that we have here. The instructions that were given in this verse 8 of the first chapter of Joshua says, The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein all day and night. And so there's a place where you need to think on it. We think of a lot of things during the day, don't we? I think about whether or not I'm going to have clean socks the next day. I think about uh, whether or not, uh, you know, my... My wife, will, will she meet me at the door and kiss me tonight? Whenever I come home? Those are things that are important to me. <laughs> Hello? There are things that are important to you that you'll think on, and you'll begin to, they'll, they'll begin to wind in your brain, you know? The other thing that I think about is food. <laughs> Hello? You think about it. You know, I'm not just trying to be funny, but I'm trying to show you that the truth of the fact that you, you, you think on things and, you, and your words are spoken, you know, when I come in the door, one of the first things I say to my wife is, what are we having for dinner? <laughs> Hello? And mama is really good about, you know, she'll talk to me during the day and say, do you want those hot dogs again tonight? <laughs> <laughs> she does better than that. <laughs> but you see the words that we have. Now get our mouth, we need to recite the things of God and allow them to be words of instructions that come from our heart. Psalms 34, 1 says, His praise will always be on my lips. Yes. That's the words that ought to be. That would match the deeds that we need to have. 
And so the words are there. You know, here's an interesting situation in, in uh, Matthew, the uh, fourth chapter. Jesus is faced with the situation and he goes, the devil comes along and says, you know what? You're hungry. You've been fasting for these 40 days. How about a loaf of bread? You know? He was saying, what, what, why don't you just take this, you know, or turn this stone into a loaf of bread? But he says, every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, and he immediately quotes scripture back to the devil. You know the devil knows how to twist scriptures? Oh, Hello? Oh, yeah. And so you can see that it will take and trip you up. He says, throw yourself down. He says, just go ahead and go up on top of this pinnacle. There's no problem. You said the angels will keep you from dashing yourself, and, and they'll run right down. He says, don't tempt the Lord your God. So he takes the same words and turns the words back against the devil. He used me as the night to give you all of this, the devil says. But at this point, he, Jesus has not died yet and taken the keys of the kingdom back. And so he's right. He could do that. But he says, you know what? You'll have no other gods before me. He says, you'll worship the Lord God thy God only and nobody else. And so there's the very picture that we have. And so we see a place we have today about our words. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And nothing was made that was made that was made without it. In John's first chapter, verses 1, 2, and you go on down to verse 16 if you want to read some more about that. But that's the picture that we have. And so he speaks these words. God said, let there be light. He speaks words. Now, God does not lie. So his words are true. So let there be light. He says, let us create man in our own image. After our likeness, male and female create and so God speaks. Aren't you glad God spoke those words? Do you think those words are true? If you don't believe those words are true, then I don't know why you're existing here because God made you. And you're sitting here tonight. Hello. And you're the, by faith you believe God. And we see over in Hebrews 11, 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So we have to have faith uh, that the words that God spoke are true for our life uh, and we can apply them to our life and use those words uh, to make a difference not only for our own heart, for the hearts of others. James 5, 17 says, Elijah was a man with a, a nature like ours. In other words, Elijah, you know, he got under a juniper tree, he got all upset. He didn't like it. He got uh, mad because God uh, would, didn't bless him the way he wanted. So he, just, he gets all upset. And yet it says here that he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And for three and a half years it did not rain. Man, I'd like to have that relationship with God. Some of you, if you're a farmer, you would like to be able to say, God, I need rain today. Boom. God, no rain. Boom. God, sunshine. God. Well, Elijah did. Hello. So what it tells me is that God is going to listen to you if you get into the right place in the right time and seek the face of God. Hello? Right words. Right words that will make a difference in the life. Sir, I don't know you, but you have a place where God wants to bring some integrity into your life. Where in the past, you've been a person that couldn't be trusted by people. Because you used to be a liar. God knows your heart and knows that you've changed and knows that things are turning. God's saying to you that if you will seek his face with the words of God and with love and with care, he's going to take and turn your heart for you and help you, sir. I don't know you. Uh, no one here, if they know you, that no one's told me anything about you. But what I'm saying to you is something that has hurt you in the past. And that hurt has kept you sometimes from telling the truth and being honest with people because you are mad at that individual. You let it go and let God help you and let him change you. And it's going to be a mighty miracle that will happen in your life, brother. Because you'll find those words and you can meditate on those things. You'll say, God, you're going to help me and I'm going to believe you for this. Okay? It's going to help you in your relationships. And that's vital. Okay? 
Father, we pray right now, God, by the blood of Jesus. Bring destiny into this heart, God. Bring clarity of mind and heart. We thank you for truth, God, that will help set this man free. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise. I just want to share also, for those of you in the congregation have been here, and I've seen you at different times, I want you to know your pastor does not tell me anything about you. Anything that I have spoken to you, I have not gotten from your pastor. Nor from anybody else in the congregation. Hello? Because what I want you to understand is that I have no ability. The gifting that happens is because God wants to touch your heart. That's the only reason this happens. So God's just interested in your heart. And interested in what's going on in your life. And so that's why we share those things with you. And let God begin to be the Lord of your life and different areas of your life. And so that's why we share that. But here we go on and we see not only that, but in Psalms 19, verse 14, it said, to Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable to you. So we've been talking about words. And I want to talk just briefly about the types of words that we use. You know, a person who translates uh, is a person who has a the ability to be able to take words and turn them. You know what one of the words is that people use to translate? Gossip. <laughs> Gossip. Oh! Can I tell you about Pastor Cunningham? Yeah, he's not, you haven't heard about it. Let me just get close to you because I don't want anybody else to hear this tonight. <laughs> but I want you to know what, what he's like. And what? His feet stink. <laughs> but don't you tell him that I told you that. You just you pray. You pray. And ask God to, to touch his feet, okay? But don't tell anybody else now. But I, you know, because I know you're, you're, you're a brother in the Lord and you love God. And it's not true. This is an illustration. <laughs> Isn't that just like us? Man, come home from work and he says, that Eric that works with me, boy, he just, beep, 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 me off. And you'd go, Oh, what do you do? Well, you just, you don't know. Actually, all he did was to ask you to help him at work, and you didn't like it because he already does better work than you, and, and he, the boss is, likes him better than you anyway because you, he's a worker and you're not. And so the truth is, it comes out, but that's not what you're going to say to to the significant other, your pastor, or your pastor, your wife, your husband. Hello. So, we find ourselves, you know, all of a sudden, here's somebody that's running for God, and they, they're, they just recently got saved. They're serving God. There's nothing like what we call new converts. That's a new convert. Somebody has really recently given their life to Jesus. And then they come up, and they say, Brother, you know what it's like to be able to witness to somebody in this situation? Well, uh, uh, no. And all of a sudden, you're embarrassed. Then you say, well, no, not in that way, but I can tell you about other ways. And all of a sudden, you're caught in a place where that brother or that sister is doing more for God than you are. And says, what do I do about this person that wants to come to church? This is the third person, and, and I don't know how to maybe work something out. Well, their, their car's broken down right now, but they're getting it fixed. Can, can we do anything? Oh, no, my car's, I, I don't have room in my car. Okay, so all of a sudden... You know, and you get jealous. You know what? We need everybody in this room. If New Philadelphia is going to get saved, if your friends and your relatives, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister are going to get saved, it's going to take everybody in this room. So there's no one more special than anybody else in this room. We all are in this thing together. That's why when we pray for this chair, this empty chair, 
you know, if all three of you put your hands on this same chair, that's okay. We'll find another chair to set somebody in. If we have three people, we got all the chairs full, and there's three people for this one chair. Don't get all, well, they, they get special priority, you know. Well, so what? Come to church and love God and forget about all the little nitty-bitty, gripey things that just take and put a burr in your saddle. Amen. I can't stand guys that wear lipsticks. You know? They, they look out of place to me. But if they walked in the door, if somebody walked in the door with a tattoo, I don't have a tattoo anywhere on my body. I grew up where I didn't believe in tattoos. And you got a tattoo, and you're wearing a tattoo, and I'm sitting here going, this is a church I see more tattoos, and I said, this can't be God. <laughs> God wouldn't save somebody with a tattoo. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I've had that said to me. Isn't that sad? Yes. But words that are spoken, do you hear what I'm saying? Hello. I love all of you. <laughs> I think. <laughs> So gossip is something that, it's a word we need to set aside, okay? But what we do need to do is this next word, and it's a type of word, and it's called to be a prayer warrior. Amen. Oh, the blood of Jesus set me free, God. I'm in need, I need you to touch my soul, God. I pray, Father God, for Eric. I pray that he gets saved, his life is turned around. I want to get a hold of God. I, would, I think God is deaf and he wants me to speak out loud. I think that's why he has everybody raised, all the angels in heaven, is they're singing out because he can't hear them. You know, whatever the song. And so he likes, he likes the noise because it brings reverence, because you worship the creator who created you. He likes that because you'll honor him and he gives you an eternity and he prepares a place for you, something that you can't even imagine. Hello. Isn't that powerful a place of prayer? Here's so you know, the other thing I like to do is I like to get next to somebody that I know knows how to pray. I, and they've been praying for a long time. Because I'll listen to them. What's he saying? What's she saying? And all of a sudden it turns the whole picture around in my heart. Because I learned I'm learning a little bit about how to pray. Hello? Back in this church, you can stand right or sit right up here. And from, from this night, we just prayed earlier, you could have you could have sat up here and heard all the prayers. Because it was <laughs> it was a radiating. Amen. But that's something that we can learn and it'll help us and, and help in what we do and we get a breakthrough in our lives. And see what happens with prayer is that what we do is we give it to God and it breaks strongholds. There are things that are coming against your life which try to keep you from doing right and being right, and not only with God, but with mankind. You might as well get used to it. There's always going to be human beings in heaven. You might as well enjoy them now. Go get, <laughs> you know, and have fun with people now. You don't wait until you try to get to heaven before you decide to have a good time. Hello? Yeah, come on. Power words. You know what's the most powerful? There's two words that are the most powerful words in the English language, and they're short. One is no, because I will not do sin anymore. No, I'll not be a person who's carrying all this baggage anymore. No, devil, I'm not going to serve you anymore. I'm going to love God with all my heart, soul, strength, and might, and I'm going to lay myself down before the hand of God and allow Him to touch my life and set me free. The other word is Yes, Jesus, what is it you want for my life? Uh, I'll do it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yes, Lord. We can sing that song and just get it down, man. And just begin to, yes, Lord. Nope. <laughs> nobody else wants to go, nobody else wants to go, yes, Lord. Amen. That's power words. Words that can change the situation. And here's the other word that does, that makes a difference. I, in the name of Jesus. I cast you out, you lying demon. Uh, you that are trying to break up my marriage, you're a liar, you stupid idiot. Get out of my way. Your mother smokes in it. You're just so good, Get away from me. 
But say in a word, my servant shall be healed. The other thing is, and if you notice when we came into church, a power word is called speaking in tongues. There's something about Yebo Tomo Sharadabo. Yebo Tolonto. I want the presence of God. Amen. And begin to speak in tongues. I was raised to say that it didn't exist anymore. And I tell you what, when I was with some other uh, friends of mine that we were in this church, and I'll just name it, it was a Baptist church, and we knelt down uh, at this guy's home, and I was on a, just an Autobahn, and I was sitting there, and I was, all of a sudden, I began to do that. <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, what's going on here is that we got filled with the Holy Ghost. There were eight of us. We so got turned on by God that in the next six weeks in that Baptist church, we saw 150 people get saved. Oh, come on. And they didn't like it so much that they kicked us out. And it got filled with the Holy Spirit. And you write today, you write Ichabod across the table, top of that door, because there isn't anybody in that church anymore. They closed it down because they took away from the power of God. Come on now. So what I'm sharing with you is, man, it's all right to get excited. Yes, it is. Yes. Now, don't do what I tried to do the other night. Don't jump up on the chair and try to do that. <laughs> no. Your pastor tried to warn me that it would be dangerous to do so. <laughs> so do you understand? But the Holy Ghost and fire, that's what we need. We need the presence of God. And some of you say, oh, I'm scared to allow this Holy Spirit to come into my life. Don't be. Why would you not want a gift that God would give to you? A present to give to your heart and to your life. He says, from your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes, oh, what a joy. Amen. Amen. That place where you can see God move and God touch you and help you. How many love the fact that you're filled with the Holy Ghost? Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's begin to praise God and thank Him. Begin to praise God. Hallelujah. Praise His name. Word of the Lamb of God. These words bring life. These words change hearts. These words make a difference right now. Let the word, oh, the holiness of God, be alive in you. Oh, God, hallelujah, praise God. Word is
instead of having to bring me to heart a love and care. He loves you tonight. And he wants to come in and do a tremendous work for you still. He's going to break all fear out of your life. There's fear in your heart that you, you give over to God that God's going to just take it and make you do something that you don't want to do. Since you do in your heart of hearts, you do want to do the will of God. That's been something that's been in your heart for a long time. And you, you've tasted of God before. He's tasted good. He's been good into your heart. And He once again wants to be faithful by His own side. You believe God can do that for you tonight? Father, we pray right now, God, that you touch our sister. You grant God a uh, releasing into her life, Father God. Uh, I thank you, Father God, that by your tender mercies, you know her, God. You are scooping her up into your hands, God. Uh, you love her, God, and I pray, God, cause that love uh, to go forth, Father God, the strength, God, uh, of the Holy Ghost and fire, God, be upon her life, God, uh, and bring destiny, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that uh, that you hurt, the hurt that has been there, you release from her, God, yes, Lord. and touch her right, right now, Jesus. God, by the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God the praise. We are not fighting against each other. We're fighting against hell. And so we're fighting against the devil. God will equip you with all that's necessary to take and win that battle. And he'll give you the words that you need to speak. Aren't you glad that you can speak words that will take and cause the devil to run? Oh, oh, oh. It, aren't, don't, you like, don't you like kicking him in the shins instead of me kicking you? Yeah. Oh, it's so much better. You, you know, because when, when it's all said that, you, got, you get to giggle at him. <laughs> I got you, devil. Hello. And he says that, that feels good. Feels good. I've always wanted it. You know, here's what I want to see happen in my life. I want to be praying with somebody. And I want them to say, give their life to Jesus. And just as they say amen, I said, and we, we prayed a prayer together. And they said amen. I'd like the rapture to occur. Because before the devil can even hoodwink or mess around with that individual, they go to heaven. Wouldn't you want that to, you know what, I would not want my, I would not wish hell on anybody. Everybody says, I want to be with my friends in hell. You want, it's going to be dark black and it's going to be just an empty and you're going to see it. Just an emptiness going on and, and I wouldn't want that. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. Tonight, let's be people that have the word of God and it's like a fire. Shut up in our bones. I can't contain it. No way. I gotta let it go. You gotta let it go. Hello. You gotta let it go. Sis, let it go. Let it ring in your heart. Let it go. Because there's been some fight in you. And there's been some things that have come down and, and you wanted to just sometimes just throw it down and quit. You don't have to do that. Because what you've got is you've got a husband that loves you and he's going to undergird you and strengthen you. You need to learn more than ever before that you can trust your husband and you can get words to speak words to him and he'll be a comfort to you and an encourager to you. Because he's going to learn words that are going to be of help to you. And you're going to learn words that will be of help to him. And God will change the whole circumstances that you have that, so that you don't want to just go down and quit. Amen. You're going to be a powerful and for God. Father, I pray right now for our sisters, God. I pray the Lord God that I come against uh, the, the devil's his, the, just his divisiveness and lies that he would speak to this heart, God. Precious is she in her hands, God. I pray for this marriage, God, and I pray, God, that a strengthening, God, a, a God, a loosening, God, of this destiny into their in their lives, Father God, that you would touch them, Father, and I believe you for it. That sure. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God praise.
I speak words of life to my hand. I pray, Father God, you release all pain. The blood of Jesus makes me whole. I thank you for loving me and touching my body. Father, we pray right now, God, release John from all pain, Father God. I pray bring normal seats in this hand, God. And I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to take this do this. Okay. Where's the thing? Still there? Okay. Hold your hand. Repeat after me, say, Dear Jesus, I forgive those who have spoken against me. I speak words of life to my fingers. I thank you for my deal. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, squeeze it again. Squeeze it again. Hallelujah. One more time. Squeeze it again. Jesus, we thank you for this healing. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. One more time. Sweet pain. Pain? Is your last pain in one of your first pain? Alright? In the morning you wake up, and what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to put that hand right next to your lovely, your wonderful husband's face, and it'll be, it's not, it's not lovely. I understand what you're saying, okay? Don't let me get, let me give this woman a hope. Okay. And you'll be able to put your hands on his cheeks and, do, and your hand, and there'll be no fingers hurting, so you'll be able to give him a big pat kiss, and he'll go, wow, you did get healed. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs>